Welcome everyone to Gamer Mill. CES is here, plus I've got a really interesting leak. But first, check out today's sponsor, Mashdrop. They're a group buy website with some amazing deals on gaming hardware. It's free to sign up and they've got new deals all the time. So check that out in the description below. Okay, now let's get to the news. First up, we've got something I've seriously hoped NVIDIA would release since they announced their RTX line of GPUs, and that's a cheaper version without ray tracing, so no Tensor or RT cores, which would significantly bring down the cost. At first, it seemed we'd only be getting something for the mid to lower tier cards, but if today's leak is accurate, that simply won't be the case. Originally found by Hardware Lux, there's a benchmark from GFX Bench that clearly shows a GTX 1180. Now, before I get into the numbers, there is one thing to think about. If Nvidia does go through with this, and I'd be shocked if they didn't because I'll bet they aren't selling near the number of GPUs that they expected. The problem is that if they do this with every RTX card, we can all but guarantee a ton of developers who are thinking about supporting RTX won't. Simply put, the player base was already minimal, and now the vast majority of those thinking about getting an RTX card will likely go for the GTX line instead. If this is true, everyone who bought an RTX card really got screwed. The only hope is for Nvidia to put big money into convincing publishers, but the 11 series may have been a backup already, so it's doubtful. I mean, obviously I don't know that, but if you look at how hard Nvidia pushed their RTX cards to just release something without it, suggesting they're hurting. Think about how Microsoft initially went full in on Kinect with Xbox One. We're bringing a new Kinect sensor paired with every Xbox One. Every Xbox One. Every Xbox One. But after it didn't pan out, they slowly lowered support until they got rid of it entirely. When it comes to the benchmark, the software is seeing it as an RTX 2080, which basically just points to it being Turing-based, just likely without those RT or Tensor cores. That of course means it isn't just some Pascal refresh like some rumors suggested. And when it comes to performance, keep in mind that the GTX card was only tested on Linux, so we don't have a perfect comparison, but video cards did put it side by side with Windows. And as you can see, minus a random anomaly, they're nearly identical. Of course, that's what we would expect, but basically, while it could technically just be something NVIDIA is toying with, there's such an obvious need for this that I'd be shocked if it didn't pan out. Here's to hoping. Next up for today, Intel made quite a few announcements at CES. First, they announced that they'd begin rolling out new 9th gen chips across their full product stack, but they didn't tell us what they were. Luckily for us, the chips shortly appeared on Intel's official site, and they're pretty interesting. Basically, most models seem identical, but add an F by the name. For example, there's now an i7-9700KF. This ultimately just means that it lacks an integrated GPU. What's great about this for gamers is that we've never needed their integrated GPUs anyway. Okay, the Steam survey may say otherwise, but a ton of gamers and many professionals use discrete GPUs, which makes the iGPU in Intel's chips effectively pointless, so you're paying for something you don't need. AMD realized this when they released Ryzen without an integrated GPU, adding another way they could cut costs. With that said, Intel will likely just use current chips with defects in the iGPU and just disable it. This of course means we should expect these chips to be slightly cheaper. And while they don't have a price yet, other than the 9400F, I wouldn't expect anything too big. But of course, any price drop is welcome. Lastly for today, Intel showed off their first Ice Lake chip based on their 10 nanometer Sunny Cove architecture. What's interesting to me is that they seem to be completely overriding Cannon Lake, which makes me think that the earlier rumor of the company going with something else to be true. Though it's still based on 10 nanometers, so only partially true. Either way, they're going to initially release in notebooks by the holidays, so it seems pretty clear we won't be getting 10 nanometer desktop CPUs this year. With that said, Ice Lake supports Thunderbolt 3, Wi-Fi 6, or 802.11ax, and laptops with over 25 hours of battery. Though of course that's meaningless without actually using the laptop to see what it's in. So yeah, while they went over a couple other things, which I may get to in another video, these were the more immediate ones. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for cheaper NVIDIA GPUs or what about cheaper Intel CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, definitely make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.